There's a moment when corrupt officers realize they've gone too far and there's no turning back. Just like this first case where an officer saw his career crumble right before his eyes. Pull two off 10, we're gonna be on 200 east about 600 north. Hi. Oh, hey. How you doing? Oh, good. How are you doing? Good, we had a call about a disturbance here. There's no disturbance here. I'm not here, we're just talking. Okay, well it looks we like you're... We haven't yelled or nothing. <clears throat> looks like you're trying to talk to someone that doesn't want to talk. No, he has his window down. We've been talking. We had some house stuff to talk about and stuff, and we're just talking. He's just keeping warm, I reckon. I don't know. I didn't ask him to get out. So. Well, his, his window was rolled up. That's weird. Well, well, you weren't here the whole time because his window wasn't rolled up. <laughs> he rolled it up when he turned on his heater. But She's we leaving talking. and I'm, I'm going. Yeah. We're not, there's no disturbance. Officer Jean Joubert arrived on the scene and basically jumped to the worst conclusion. Although the woman tried her best to explain. So are you doing okay? All good, I'm good. Good, yeah. I'm just going yeah, in and she's leaving. So. Yeah, we're just talking about some stuff. Is there some, was there somebody else here? Cause I'm confused now. I am too. We didn't hear anything. Well, Nobody yelled. Maybe just yelling through my window or something. No, like I was not yelling. Talking yet. loud, excuse me. No, I was talking just like that. I wasn't talking loud. What's your name? Monty. No, we haven't talked. I talk like this. Are you, are you guys ex? Uh -huh. Yeah. Ex -wife? Okay. And we still have some. Stuff. Who's the landlord? Jeremy. Do you, any well, idea why he'd be calling? Maybe she was yelling through the no, window. No, maybe they. I don't know. Monty, I was not yelling. And well, you know I had the window closed. Maybe. No, yeah. I was talking. This is as loud as I talk. So you can call that loud. He maybe maybe tell him. How far out Considering how puzzled both were, it's obvious that for some reason the landlord had called 911. And he hadn't even, we, ain't have, we don't have any issue. We were just talking about Can I just talk to you inside later in just sure. a sec? Sure. Excellent, thanks. Sure. Okay. No, we, I was just leaving. We were just talking. That's all we were doing. We're not arguing. You're not mad. Okay. Nothing. Can you take your hands out of your pockets for me? Yeah. Well. You're cold. <laughs> Can you just keep them out of your pockets, please? Uh, no, I don't have, you don't feel, I don't have can anything you, in my pockets. Well, don't you, be silly. Why don't you settle down a little bit, okay? It's something I do for my safety. If somebody and harassing you, you would get a little, like, why are you harassing me? I didn't do nothing wrong. So Who's I, harassing you? It feels like harassment. I'm so. just asking you what's going on. I need okay. you to stay here. Greta was aware of her Fourth Amendment rights very well by refusing an unlawful search request by this corrupt cop. By this point, Greta was getting more anxious and concerned. There's an oak oh, for crying out loud. Okay. Now you're exaggerating. I need you to settle down. There's no. Based on the information you know, I, I got. I can talk. Based on the information not, I was given. You're not in power over okay. anybody. I'm, I'm about to put you in handcuffs no, if you don't stop. No, you're not put me in handcuffs. Yes, I am. No, you're not. So let me tell you I've what the call was. Wrong. I've done nothing Let me wrong. tell you what the report was. I don't care what the report was. He just told you we weren't doing anything. And we are the two people involved. While still being entirely, she gives the story to the cops straight, having to put her foot down, something this tyrant didn't like for one bit, threatening to handcuff her. Um, you were being disorderly out in front of the house. Um, That's a lie. That you were shouting at him. No, no shouting. And that you were not letting him get out of the car. Never, never did. I was just standing there talking. We were just talking. He never said, move, I'm gonna get out of the car. He had the heater on, he turned it off, he started the car back and we were just talking. Okay. And I was leaving. We were, we were, we were about, I gave him a piece of mail that came to okay. the house that he needed. And then we started talking about, we gotta sell the house. And we were talking about pricing and just different things. Can you just, just Listen, stand still, please? Me, don't tell me how to move. I You're just, not God. I just get asked you it. to please stand still. I asked you to quit bossing me around. <laughs> I'm not doing nothing wrong. I asked you. I'm not bossing. You know what you're doing, sir. You I know what you're doing. You, to stand you still, know please. what you're doing. Stop. Will you Your please? Ego is out of control. I just said, stop. please. Will you please I'm just settle down? I'm not doing anything wrong. We were having a perfectly you know fine conversation. Yeah. Me and Monty, are we the. Did he tell you there was no problem? Did I tell you no problem? Well, people. And we, are the, I, we didn't see yeah. anybody. So I need to speak to people so. separately when it's, an, when it's a domestic violence There's, possible oh, issue. Okay, I'm going. Stop. Stop. You're under you arrest. Okay, you're under no, arrest. No, I'm not. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Stop it. Your you're, you're Put your hands behind your back. You are under arrest. Okay, I'm not doing nothing. Put your hands behind your back. Stop I'm, resisting. I'm, I'm. Her anxiety was peaking at this point, and the controlling nature of the tyrant made her merely walk away. As a response, this tyrant wasted no time in arresting her. 
her, turning this peaceful situation into a mess in a split second. I'm not doing nothing. Stop resisting. I'm not doing nothing. Stop Just resisting. Stop. Just stop right stop now. Stop resisting. Okay, I Put am. Put your hands behind your back. I am. Stop right now. Put your hands behind your back. Stop right now. Yes, stop. expedite you're now. You're out. No, you're lying. Put your hands behind your back. No, Put I'm your not. hands behind your back. I didn't do nothing, sir. Put your other hand behind Please your back. stop. Please Put your don't other make hand. this something it's not. Put your My, hand behind your back. I had told you, will you stop? Put your other hand no, behind your back I then. I didn't do nothing. Put your other hand behind your back. Listen, stop. Just stop right now. Stop. Behind you. You are harassing me. Please stop. Put your hand behind your back. I'm not doing nothing. I don't have a weapon. Put your hand behind your back. I'm not doing nothing wrong. Put your hand behind Ow, your back. Ow, you hit my head. Please Put stop. Put your hand behind I'm your back. I'm not doing nothing Put wrong. Put your hand behind your back. <laughs> Greta eventually begged the cop to have a little mercy. However, at this point, this officer had made up his mind on brutality. Put your hand you know behind what? your I back. Do... Put your hand Ow! behind your back. Ow! Ow! That hurts! Put your hand behind Ow! your back. He's hit stop, me! Stop, stop, stop. He's hit me! On your back. He's hit Roll me! He just over. hit me in the Roll face! Over. Put your hand over. I didn't do nothing! Roll I didn't over. do nothing! I did nothing! He hit me in the okay. face! Okay. He hit stop, me in the stop, face! Stop! Stop! He hit me in the face, please! Okay, stop. All I did was walk off! That's all I did! Yeah. That's all I did! Okay, I didn't stop. do nothing! Stop! We'll figure it out. I did not do nothing! Okay, we'll he hit me in the face okay. like three times! By this point, another officer enters the scene and takes over, but the damage was already done by Joubert. This clearly indicates that Officer Joubert had in fact assaulted Greta multiple times, not just what can be seen on the body cam footage. You got a lawsuit! You fought it! You cannot do that to somebody! I didn't do nothing! I did nothing! Get the medical here! Get medical here! Right now! Even whilst in pain and suffering on the cold concrete floor, Greta knew that her only way to fight this injustice was to file a lawsuit. This is exactly what she went on to do, filing a $1 million lawsuit against Officer Joubert, alleging that he violated her constitutional rights by using excessive force when he arrested her. She also argued that she had committed no crime. At this point, Joubert went over to talk to the landlord. Officers, I'm so sorry. Are you the, the owner then? Yes. Okay. Where is Monty? Monty was in his... Yeah, he was when I got here. She, oh, okay. Where did oh, he, where, is where he inside? He, live? he lives in the back. Of so which the, one? The entrance, the entrance. Let me grab my shoes real quick. Give me two seconds. Okay. So what did you see happening? So I pulled in, came home. Was, I'll, I'll give you just a brief background and then tell you what I saw. Um, I got home. Oh, he's, he's, he's friendly for all I know. Like, he okay. was fine with me. Okay. And, we've, and we've had no issues. Monty's been great. He's a good neighbor. He's a good tenant. He's, he's good. Um, I, from, from all accounts, she provokes him. Uh -huh. You know, if, if ever, you know, there's been a couple times where there's been kind of a, a dispute outdoors. And she, 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 she really rides him pretty hard. Uh -huh. um, but, so she, she comes, he's made it clear, he's told me she's not welcome, and that I'm welcome to ask her to leave. The landlord gave his side of the entire issue, recounting past incidents that none of these cops had ever witnessed before. Okay. He got home from work, and he had no way to get her to leave. Um, and so he started locking this outdoor, outdoor door. And it goes down the stairs to another door. So, so, and so since she couldn't talk to him through the door here, she's been coming to his window wells okay. on the side and, and yelling at him through his window wells. And so that's where several times over the last few months, I mean, it's almost been on a weekly basis, I'll get a complaint from a neighbor because they can hear her yelling at him. And so probably three weeks ago, I came out one time she was yelling at him down her window well and or down his window well and I said hey what, what's going on here you know and, and I confronted her and asked her when was this this was about three weeks ago okay defensive and angry with me at first and it took about five ten minutes of her really challenging me you know what, what am I doing who's complaining what's you know and I, I didn't tell her the neighbor but just said look 
you know, I, I really don't have a problem that you're here as long as you're welcome and you're civil. But when my neighbors are complaining, we have a problem. And if I have to involve the police or something, I basically kind of warned her, right? Um, and it got better. Um, she still came around a few times after that, but she was a little quieter. But And then the last couple of weeks, it's I've had a few more complaints. Have so. we been here in the last couple of weeks? No. It appears the landlord is more concerned with Greta than her ex, Monty. If Monty doesn't feel the need to call 911 on her, it's unclear what crime she has actually committed. As the questioning of the landlord continues, Monty walks out. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh Brian? Yeah, that's all good. Yeah. You hear me? It's yeah. Just... So I goes too far sometimes. Just so you know the circumstances, I had a, I had a neighbor text me again, and oh. they and I was, so I was like I felt like I'm, I've got we, we just want to get before. a statement from you guys separately before because yeah. things kind of oh. escalated. So so uh, do, do you have any cameras here or anything? I don't. I wish okay. I did. I, I've got a ring that I need to install. Were you watching what happened? Um, no, I saw I saw you come here and. Okay. I, I almost wanted to point you around the corner. I should have. Well, yeah, it was, you, it was really weird because looking at the map and it says 207, a, 238. A, and then yeah. I'm like, okay, it's over it's here. It's a 650 oh, North her. address. I have to come into my garage. She was standing there at Monty's door. Mm -hmm. Talking at his car to door? Him at his car door. She okay. was standing at his car door. And so my immediate thought, you know, and I, you know, this is something I, I don't know what the facts are, but was that she got him pinned in his car and he's not getting out because he's trying to avoid confrontation and um was his window up or down up. so the landlord took the liberty for everyone involved to alert the police for greta simply talking to monty it's still no wonder how the landlord assumes something like this considering he admits himself to not knowing the facts so this has been over months and i have some text history can i see that text and can yeah. i get that neighbor's info yeah uh, that's what I just did too. Um, can you? Oh, we got the whole crew. There's an upstairs. Wow. There's an upstairs neighbor. Up here. That heard. Will you get a statement from her? Yeah. Actually, can we have you guys do witness statements? What's that? Just basically, you sign your name saying, "Yeah, this is what happened." Sure. Okay. Cool. Will you Will those. you get statement three? One for him, him, and then her upstairs. Yes, sir. Thank you. Dad. For someone who is being harassed and bullied by their ex on a weekly basis, Monty sure does seem more than cheery around the police. Further adding to the facts that 911 was alerted about an incident which didn't even come close to being an actual crime. Nevertheless, it doesn't stop these corrupt cops from building their case and charging her with interfering with an arresting officer, a class B misdemeanor, and disorderly conduct. However, these charges were dismissed by the bountiful city prosecutor only a month later. Following these disturbing events, Greta filed a federal lawsuit, and the bountiful police department had taken notice of this event as well. In a formal hearing concerning allegations that Joubert had violated several department policies during the arrest, Chief Edward Beeler issued a written reprimand, finding that Joubert striking Greta Jensen in the face was unreasonable and unnecessary. Jensen said Bountiful offered her a $20,000 settlement, but she turned it down after she was advised the city was lowballing her. Therefore, her case remains ongoing. If you think that the police just abused those citizens who may be doing something unlawful, this next case follows the case of a completely lawful activity, which these tyrants turned into a crime. Go outside. No, you. sir. This is a public lobby. I'm doing legal business, sir. You have been told three times not to and come. And I'm waiting listen, for look the... at me. And you've I've been, been told by the commissioner that if I have legal business, have I can come in this times. office, sir. In this case, we follow the account of Annapolis Audit, who visited the Maryland Capitol Police Department to file a complaint, which is a completely normal and legal activity for inside a police station. So I was here uh, a couple weeks ago, and I turned this in, and it wasn't, uh... Hold on, hold on. Let me get a police officer for you. Okay. Have a seat right there. What's your name? I'd rather not give that. Well, the name is on your complaint, right? No, it's not. You'd rather not give your name for the officer to come out here and address you? Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, I checked that there's no sergeant around. Okay. So what's that supposed to mean? I'm just not allowed to turn in my complaint now? Not that you're not allowed to turn in your complaint, there's no one to accept it from you. Okay, well, we're during business hours on a Tuesday afternoon, well, ma'am. Well, this is session. Maryland General Assembly is in session right now. Uh huh, right down and the street. A lot of the officers uh -huh. are out on patrol. Okay, well, we're, we're going to have to call one over here to do their job, ma'am. Well, 
You, you can't. Talk, you don't talk to me like that. I'm not a police officer. Okay. I'm trying to assist you. I'm not talking to you like anything. I'm just saying you're gonna have to call a police officer down here. You can't deny me a public service. By this point, the public servant starts to become defensive and try to justify the reasons that his complaint is not as important. I'll sit over here and ring the doorbell. Then. How about that? Oh wait, so now there is a sergeant here. Is what you're saying? So what you're saying is there is a sergeant here. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's explain a big lie before you come out here, because you just told me there's no sergeant here. So how are you speaking to a sergeant? How are you speaking to a sergeant then, ma'am? How are you speaking to a sergeant if there's not one here? You want to answer that question? How are you speaking to a sergeant if there's not a sergeant here? Hi, sir. Hi, who are you, ma'am? I'm Sergeant Alexander. Sergeant Alexander, can you tell me why this lady just lied to me and said there's no sergeant here in the building? And it's all on videotape. If you want to sit down and go over it, we can sit down and go over it and you can see where you're wrong. We can go over it and you can see where you're wrong. Okay, I hear you, sir, but what is it that you need? I'm here to turn in a complaint. Okay, all right, have a seat. And we'll I, I did that and then she came out here and told me there's no sergeant here to take it, but apparently there is, so. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not in that. There's still a sergeant here though. Ma'am, regardless, it's during business hours on a on a business day. There has to be somebody to accept this. Can I help you? So then why did she say he wasn't here? Why did she say he wasn't here then? What is the issue? I'm trying to turn in paperwork. This is First Amendment protected activity. I'm here to turn in a paperwork. What's up, Chang? I'm here to turn in complaints. I don't know why the lady that came out there who was originally gonna help me came out and said, oh, there's no sergeant here to help you, so. Due to the receptionist lady's incompetence and bad management, other officers were also attracted towards the commotion. The auditor, on the other hand, kept trying to explain how he's just trying to practice his Fourth Amendment rights. See how quick you got down here when you thought that I was causing disturbance or when someone cried to call no, you down here, voice. but nobody could come down here to help me two seconds ago. You voice. see how quick both you just walked down here to try and fringe upon my rights, but yet neither one of you could walk down here and help me. Right. Yeah, sir, I have paperwork to turn in. Don't walk away from me. Don't you tell me what to do. Sir, you're a public servant. I'm telling you. No, you're not telling me. I'm telling you. Do you want to get arrested again? Sir, I'm doing... Pro sir, this is legal... Give me the papers. Yeah, it's going to be date, it's going to be date stamp, and a copy to return to me. I have a date stamp. Well, get that, that's how it's done, sir. That's the official way it's done. You can't change protocol. You can't change protocol right. just because you don't want to deal with me, sir. I do want to deal with you. Okay. This tyrant of a cop couldn't bother properly practicing his own protocol to file a complaint and is just trying to wash his hands of the auditor, showing how he couldn't care less for the everyday concerns of citizens. There's a legal way. Sir, there's a legal way of doing this. Can you show me what you're talking about? Yeah, it's a complaint right here. From your, you, what, what else do you need to see, sir? Goodbye. Have a good day. You don't feel, you, sir, you don't decide out here if the complaint's viable to get filled in or not. I get to turn it in and then the review process Says goes through the complaint and then they decide if it's viable and they're going to just do something with it, sir. Operate with us right sir. now, or you can leave. I, they're sergeants. That's who you turn complaints into. Okay, so then why is it that I'm asking them to why simply you, stamp it, sir? I'm asking them to stamp, stamp it as received. The auditor explained how the received stamp is most important to confirm whether the complaint has been officially lodged. This is legal business. I have legal business. No, ma'am. I'm. This is legal business. I'm, I'm in a public legal lobby. Person. I'm going to be here and I'm going to help you. Okay. Outside because you're what? disturbing. I'm not disturbing flow. anything, ma'am. You're disturbing. No, I'm not, ma'am. I'm asking them to do their job. They're disturbing it I'm by here. refusing me I'm services, ma'am. What do you need? I need these stamped and returned to me. I need these dates stamped, receipted, and returned to me, ma'am. I'm not. I'm is this not. The second one that you've done. Yeah, it's the second one. I'm allowed to is fill it, it more the same than one. Thing? No, it's not the same people. thing. This this one. Is the same thing because it wasn't stamped and returned to me. I need this stamped, ma'am. This was not stamped and returned to me. I need these done properly. I'm not interfering with the flow of business. They're refusing to do it. Hey, I want two sergeants here and the lieutenant. That's it. Everyone else can go. What's up, Barnes? How you doing, buddy? How you doing, man? Good, man. How you doing? Good. 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 I'm hanging in there, buddy. I'm hanging in there. I'm trying to fill out complaints for what happened that day, but they're like they're being ignorant about it. And then they're trying to say that I'm interfering with the flow of business. I came down here, I rang the doorbell, a lady came out. She goes, there's no sergeant here to help you, so I don't know. She goes, what do you mean? Then she walks in there and goes, hey, Sergeant Alexander. What do you mean there's no sergeant here? You're speaking to one right now, man. Why is it you're lying to me? 
Then both of these, him and Shane came down here. Okay, that's pretty quick for someone not here to help me. You came down here pretty quick to try and arrest we were, me. We were in Lawyer's Mall. But that's fine. They came down here pretty quick to try and arrest me, so why is it they can't come down here pretty quick to try and help me? Obviously, the auditor's job is to try and push our government facilities and our public servants to the limit. This is what is standard to try and assess whether the police are professional enough to deal with any kind of citizen. This explains why the Annapolis audit has to be so stern and strict. You said you can leave or you're going to be arrested. So that's how I thought you were going to arrest me because you said it, sir. It came out of your mouth. Huh? That's why I thought that. You might want to look at your camera. I have it. You might want to look at that. You might want to look all at right, it. All right, that's enough. Get him out of here. Go on. Get him out of here. I'm waiting for my paperwork, sir. Go outside. And wait. No, sir. This is a public lobby. The man who just walked into the frame was none other than the department's police chief, Michael Wilson. One would think that he was there to help in the process, but instead, he just tried to throw his power around. Yes, sir. You have been told three times not and to I'm waiting for look at me. And you've I've been, been told by the commissioner to that if I have legal business, I can come in this office, sir. You've been told three times not to trespass I'm into this building I'm doing because legal you create business. a problem when I'm you're here. I'm doing legal business, Now sir. I'm telling you to leave the building. I'm doing legal business, If you don't sir. leave the building, you're going to get arrested I'm doing, again. I'm doing legal and business, again, sir. And again, and again. I'm doing you're legal business, You're not to come back sir. here. I'm doing it's legal, legal business, sir. It is, sir. Get out or get locked up. I have a right. Put it, lock him up. Sir, I have a right to file You're grievances. You're for trespassing. No, I'm not. Yeah, you Rebecca, are. can you just please give me my paperwork so I can leave? It's too late for that. Sir, uh, Rebecca, it's what is going on out here? You're under arrest for trespassing. I'm not, sir. I'm you doing legal business. You've been told to I'm leave? waiting for my paperwork so I can leave. Ma'am, please, that's all I'm waiting for so I can leave. I wonder if it's this difficult for any everyday citizen to walk into a public building that is only there because of their taxes to file a complaint without getting threatened to be arrested over half a dozen times. How am I trespassing? I was told by the commissioner that I was allowed to come here and fill this. I asked this before. I asked the commissioner before I came down here. Trust what pass. am I allowed to do? Trespass for filing Don't a legal complaint, sir. I'm gonna come back here. Am I gonna move? This is. A, I have a right to file these complaints, sir. Okay. Hey, sir, yeah, yeah. My cell phone. Uh, no. no. Okay, cool. My keys, my cell phone, my wallet. I don't understand why I'm being arrested. I literally. Okay. I'm filing a grievance, sir. Sir, I'm filing a grievance. I'm allowed here. Sir, this is, this is a violation of 18 Code US 242. It's a deprivation of public services. I have a right to file grievances with my government, sir. After being thoroughly searched, placed in handcuffs, and facing more misconduct from the police chief, our auditor is thrown out of the building. This is only because the chief claims that he was trespassing, thus squashing his constitutional right. Doing this was legal business, okay. sir. So your initial time that you came in, uh -huh. you, you were um, trying to get an investigation started. I was trying to find out why my uh, tags have been taken off my car. I got you. I got you. And that's when I was arrested down here. Is this the second time you've you filled out this paperwork? Who'd you fill it out on the first time? The, on, you can see both of them right same there. The no, service? not the same thing. No, they're for different incidents, different, different days, oh, different you. incidents. I got you. I got you. I, I got you. Me, if you guys are here to arrest me. Well, we were coming to help you, but we were at Lawyer's Mall with a large I know, crowd. But, so. then, but then, so she was helping me. So why did that guy get mad and trespass me and have me arrested for trespassing when, when Captain Labs was helping me? She was making the copy. I'm sorry. I was explaining to you what was going on. Right. Like what? I get it. I get it. What's the issue here? So why am I in handcuffs? Okay. Um, yeah, even now, after explaining his situation to another officer from start to end, he was still unable to get a clear answer for why or how he is in handcuffs for trespassing. This shows clearly how even these cops know something is not right about this whole situation. Did you turn your camera off? No, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, let, let it, I'd say let it roll until you get to the yeah, center. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's talking? Who's talking? Who's talking? Uh, yeah, come on. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't understand how I was told by the commissioner this was lawful and legal business. No, I haven't been banned. I haven't been banned, sir. You can't ban someone from doing a constitutionally protected activity. I have a right to file this, sir. You're right. I can't come here and just sit down and chill in the office. I can't go in there and do the security card process in the center. Mr. Salt, are you going to allow me to... 
Later, he was escorted inside a police vehicle and taken to Anne Arundel County Detention Center, where he was booked on two counts of willfully disobeying in order to leave a public property while not having an apparent lawful business, and acting in a manner disruptive to disturbing the conduct of normal business, and also one act of willfully acting in a disorderly manner. On top of all this, he was held on $1,000 bail. All of this is simply for trying to practice his constitutionally protected activity. This just shows the length and the things that these corrupt and power-tripping tyrants would do simply to have a citizen lawfully try to file a complaint. The last case showed how the powers bestowed on cops and police chiefs are abused, but this next one will leave you stunned. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Do you think I'm on December 5th, 2023, Deputy James Henry Carter III made a series of decisions that would cost him very dearly. He went completely crazy on a suspect during a chase, which he didn't realize was being recorded by his body cam the entire time. Hey, you done, son? Get down. Down. Get down. Get the down. Do you think I'm... Wingspan, dude. The suspect and victim of this brutal act of violence and racism was Rashard Keith and Duncan. We'll continue your waist, man. You think I'm messing with you? You got a gun? You got a gun? You don't know? No. I got him. I'm back here. I got you. It's your boy. You'll see. It's your boy. Get up. Oh, you tough. Why are you poking me in my feet? Because you're reaching in your waistband, that's why. Now, during Carter's barrage of punches, he kept instructing him not to reach towards his waistband. When we can clearly see how incapacitated he is on the ground, how would he possibly reach for his waistband? Just like this, Carter lies to justify the beating he just served up. Negative, just one person. I think he's slick. These cops violated several departmental policies, but that's nothing when it comes to the actions of this next tyrant. Get back! Get back! Palmer shot the poor golden retriever four times, and surprisingly, his body camera was also muted during the entire event. Seeing their dog's condition, the owner, Tammy Kearns, completely lost herself. Get me a bunch of cars out here. We got a bunch of people coming out. Get back! You stupid fuck! You killed my dog! Get back! Why did you do it? Damn, I'm get back! You. Okay, your dog yeah. charged. Get back! You fuck! No, all these people seen that! That okay. dog is harmless! Okay, get ma'am. No, I need I'm you to not. get back. Ma'am, I need you it's outrageous to think that a police officer shot a golden retriever to protect himself. That dog is indeed harmless, and there was no reason to go to this extreme length. Soon after, the men of the house also came out expressing rage and frustration at the officer's action. Oh my god! We're cats <laughs> doing it! I want your name, I want your badge, everything! Palmer, oh my god, 101. Why couldn't you let her? Everybody you. get back! Everybody get back! Get back! Everybody get back! Don't walk out there! Don't walk out there! Get back! Get back! Get back! Get back! Everybody 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 get back!
Everybody get back! Get back. Get back. Get back. Get so get the door! Get the door! Everybody get back! Get back! Moments later, multiple units responded and arrived at the scene. The situation was traumatic as more people emerged out of the house. I don't talk about the public side. Don't talk about the public side. Don't talk about the public side. Public side. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I got you on camera. I don't know. I'm following the lawsuit. Okay. Sit tight. He shot her. He wasn't going to ambush him. He shot her four times. You better f*** it for it. The officer went over to talk to his colleague and once again muted his body cam throughout. Shortly after he left the place in his car, leaving the poor dog there with the family. The poor dog was taken to the hospital, but he tragically passed away. The Lorraine Police Department analyzed the video footage and surprisingly claimed that the officer did not violate any departmental policy. However, he continued to remain on modified duty and will be facing disciplinary action for muting his body cam. This officer might have gotten off easily, but this next cop was owned for this huge mistake. Shot fire! Shot fire! Shot fire! On November 12, 2023, the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Officer dispatched a couple of deputies to a house after a woman complained about her boyfriend stealing her car and also sending her threatening text messages. Soon, the cops arrived at her home and asked her for more details about the situation. Car back. I've been asking all night, can I get my car back? Like, I don't care about the argument. I don't care about, I don't even know what the argument is about. I just want my car. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with anything. I know any time we get into it, whether I'm right or wrong, I, he puts his hands on me or he threatens to put his hands on me. It gets very violent. There he is. In your car or walking up? He's walking. <laughs> Surprisingly, as the officers were talking to her, her boyfriend came onto the scene who was soon caught by the cops. What are you patted down for? Because you're getting patted down. What? Do you have any weapons on you? No, I don't have no weapons okay. on me. It's out like that. This is key. Don't got no weapons on me. Hands on your pockets. What do you want to do? I want my car. Okay, I think it's at your mom's house is what he's saying. Can How did he get here if it's at my mom's um, house? I know. Can you call your mom to see if the car's there? Yeah. Okay. It's not at the house? Okay. okay. It's not home. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I said you, my, well, you have my location, right? I'm on Green Acres. <laughs> yeah. It appeared as if her boyfriend, 22-year-old Marquis Jackson, lied about the car being at the woman's mother's home. And soon the cops decided to arrest him. Where's our car? Where's our car, Marquis? Can I talk to her? No. Can I, call her? Can I talk to her more? Mm-mm. Uh, her her oh, keys are here. Her yeah, keys right. are here. Can I give you her keys? I'm sorry. 
Do you ever filled out an affidavit with us before? No. Okay, so the suspect is going to be his information. This where it's the narrative. That's going to be what happened, the incident, okay? The officers patted him down before they cuffed him and placed him in the back of the police cruise. They started to investigate the stolen car, but had no idea that something bizarre was about to unfold. My screen. Right. You know, so it's like, why would you send me a picture of that? I'll show you again. You yeah. Know, tell me what that is. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that piece is because that's not ordinarily there. Right. Does he have any anything on the firearm, like any aftermarket like silencer? Mm -hmm. That's what that is. We couldn't even tell, but more than likely it oh, yes. probably is a weapon. And he's like, I'm going to bust your whole sh Like, I'm going to bust your windows. I'm going to bust your radio, whatever. He's like, I'm going to bust your whole sh like, Okay. By the time you get to your car, it's going to be over with. And I'm like, okay. At this point, I just, I don't want to be done with it. I don't yeah. even want to entertain it. Because he is known for playing games. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I need to show you, like, I'm not playing. Right. I'm on my car, that's that. Like, how much I paid for my car? Yeah, or how much you think that it would value out right now. Um, so, okay. Okay. Where is it? 1656 Hunt Club, over here off MLK. Shortly after Deputy Jesse Hernandez decided to do a secondary search on Marquis, and as he went near the police cruiser, something shocking happened. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! The deputy claimed that he was shot passed by the car. He fell down and opened fire at the car. The female officer also responded and they both combined fired a total of 22 shots at the car while Marquis was inside handcuffed. I, I'm, I'm good, I feel weird, but I'm good. I'm good, I'm good. Soon chaos emerged and multiple units arrived at the location with pointed at the car. They thought Marquise had shot him, but they completely forgot that he was handcuffed and was also searched beforehand. I'm not. I don't know. I it felt like it. Jesse, move over to me. I got you. Move over to me. Jesse, what come back. Uh, uh, Mark, you come right there. Dude, am I hit? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get further back, further back, further back. It was only later discovered that the deputy was never struck with a bullet. In fact, there was no gun fired. It was later discovered that an acorn hit the roof of the car and the deputy mistook that sound as a gun being fired. Here's the distressing situation from the perspective of the female officer.
43, give me traffic. Shots fired. Shots no. fired. I got a deputy down. No. No. Please, no. 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 Please. Off of McLaren. We're off of McLaren. Shots fired. No. I got a deputy down. Jesse, how are you? The cops kept firing at the car where Marquis sat completely unarmed and helpless. His girlfriend was also terrified and kept pleading with the officer to stop, but to no avail. Okay, no. okay, okay. No! Get back, get back! I'm not gonna tell you go! Get back! Get back! Get her! Get her and get her back now! No! Fortunately, Marcus escaped injuries and was saved. He later decided to file a lawsuit against those officers. And here's what his attorney had to say. My name is Julia Casada. I'm an attorney with Burris, Neeson, Baum, Curry, and Lacey. It is not acceptable that these officers, deputies, and their department is calling this a mistake. It is not okay to call it a mistake. There is no mistake. There was no mistake that Marquise was unarmed. There's no mistake that he had already been searched. There's no mistake that he was already handcuffed in the back of a patrol car when these deputies opened fire. And there's no mistake that the department hasn't released all of the footage or the information related to the shooting. This is not okay. The deputy that shot, that said that he heard an acorn or after the fact that that's a mistake, that's not acceptable. He resigned, that's not accountability. The other deputy that was exonerated that is not accountability. There has been no accountability, there has been no transparency, and there has been no justice. And we demand that, we demand transparency, we demand accountability, and we demand justice, and we stand with Marquise with this. Shortly after, his male attorney also came onto the stage and raised some valid questions. That is a question I wish that you would ask the law enforcement community, but I think the rush to judgment shown by the sergeant, uh, there are some allegations that were made at the time, uh, which turned out to be untrue. There was no real investigation by law enforcement except, well, we'll handcuff him and put him in the back. And then somehow, I don't know, maybe they thought you were Jason Bourne or somebody, Mark, he said that he escaped from handcuffs, pulled out a silenced weapon and started firing from inside the car. It sounds ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous, and I hope it sounds ridiculous to the public. Uh, so that's what we're here about. The sheriff's office also took notice of the incident and launched an internal investigation into the incident. During the investigation, Deputy Jesse Hernandez resigned from his position. On the other hand, the female officer was eventually exonerated of any wrongdoing. The sheriff, however, was very vocal about Jesse's actions and claimed that he needed to be fired for this. This cop made a terrible error, but the next ones were even more stupid. I don't know, that's called private property. You can't, you that's, can't. That's that's private property? Come here. You can't. Come here, Sergeant. I don't know, that's called private property you can't you that's can't, that's you, private property come here you can't come you, here sergeant you can't take a picture come here sergeant vehicle. come here <laughs> what it says over here the outside like. what does it say what does it say? In February 2024, a First Amendment auditor who goes by the name Siberian Tiger was walking down the road when he noticed a couple of police vehicles parked outside and he started to film them. That's when a police officer came out and confronted him. Uh, who are you? Huh? Who are you? I don't know. What are you, what are you doing? You don't know who... Are you taking close to figures the inside of the car? You can't do that, okay? Says who? Says me. Uh, who are you? I don't know. Well, then okay, you, you get lost. Be, you cannot be taking pictures of the inside of these cars. Watch me. Okay. You cannot be taking pictures of the inside of the cars. Who okay. are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? You come over here all big, tough guy? Hey, you can't be taking pictures into it. Says car. who? Says me. It's a police car, okay? And you, who are you? I'm a sergeant, okay? I'm a supervisor. Yeah? Okay, yes. And? 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 And you can't be here. And you that. can get lost. 
It doesn't work that way, my friend. How is that a work? He was a sergeant, and it was indeed shocking to see his low grasp on the law. Soon after, his ego started to kick in, and he became increasingly confrontational with the auditor. Hey. What? You're gonna go, get in my face go, like this? Go find something else. You think you're gonna intimidate me? I'm always intimidating you, man. You then what's the problem? I don't know. I'm wondering what the problem is with you. You came over here all tough guy. I'm wondering what the problem is with you. you there was be, no problem. What am I doing? You can't be taking pictures of the inside. Says who? Says me. What law? I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, so get know. lost, tough guy. It doesn't work that way. Well, how's it gonna work? I don't know. Why don't you call your bobbies over here? Why don't you call your lieutenant? No. Other sergeants? You show me out in front of the precinct with yeah. taking some pictures of inside of the police <laughs> Dumb guy. I'll take it. <laughs> what a dumb guy. <laughs> taking pictures of the yeah. inside of the vehicles that are public property. I'm on the public sidewalk taking pictures of everything that is open, visible from my eyes, mm. okay? Mm. Which is First Amendment protected activity, and oh, the tough oh, guy shows up here take, and tells me I can't take pictures. Taking pictures of the inside of the car is that's. Is, oh, is that you a, too? You want to get on my case too about taking pictures? The auditor was within his rights as he was doing nothing wrong in taking photographs of a publicly owned vehicle. However, the sergeant wasn't ready to listen to him and soon called for more backup, only to get humiliated in front of everyone. Of the vehicles in the computer. What law is that? What am I breaking? I don't know. That's called private property. You can't. You that's can't, that's you private can't, property. Come here. You can't. Come you, here, sergeant. You can't take a picture. Come here, sergeant. Vehicle. Come here. Come here. I'm good. What it says over here? The outside, if you like. What does it say? I don't know. What does it say? You don't know how to read? Any of you guys know how to read? What's your goal, sir? What do you need today? I was minding my own business. This guy comes over here, gets in my face, and, and gives me unlawful directives. So, hey, sir, can you understand why we may be... I don't need to understand anything. Well, I'm going to explain why he was concerned. Okay? Why? So, we could be concerned that somebody is targeting our police vehicles or is looking inside there to see confidential information on the screen or in other things. Okay. So, this is a reasonable Whose responsibility to protect confidential information? Whose responsibility? It's reasonable Great. to ask. Great. The officers were at fault for leaving their computer screens on inside the vehicle. The auditor then took the opportunity to teach them the difference between privately owned and publicly owned buildings and vehicles. So, next time when a, when a law abiding citizen inspects his own property, property and you're my servant that's my property. that's my property everything that's on you my property except your personal effects okay. this building my property okay. this vehicle my property you all you 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 every one of you work for me i tell you what to do i tell you how to do it i right? pay your wages that right? that's right and you answer to me. So when you get on my case, being a law-abiding citizen, quiet, I'm not talking to you. Okay. Quiet. When, when I'm a law-abiding citizen, and you get in my face, and you start threatening me, Nobody and you call your bubbies out here, assuming that I'm a, a, a criminal because you intend to do something against me, guess what? What are you going to do? You're going to get a piece of my action. The cops soon realized that they were up against someone who had way more knowledge of the law than them. After everyone had tried their best, they eventually decided to retreat inside the building, leaving him alone, something they should have done quite earlier. Trying to create a scene to get police attention. Ask her, ask her. I was walking down, I was on walking on the sidewalk. And have this I was walking on the sidewalk, very online, quietly. On a YouTube channel. Whatever you think. So whatever your I don't are, care what you think. I want you to know very very clearly, sir. That's right. You are taking up valuable resources that could be helping the city. Did I call because you? Because we are focused Great. on you. Great. Here's how you can end this. So I think that's important. This is how you can end this. What do you need? Go back to your job and mind your own damn business. You need to not point your camera inside of police vehicles and record information off of our computers. According to whom? Don't do it. According to whom? That's it. According to whom? Sir, what law is that? Okay. It, it, what law is that? Give me an ORS code that tells me okay. that tells me that I am not lawfully allowed to look at anything that my eyes can see on a public sidewalk. Okay. What law is that? We are going to leave, and we understand that you are not going to point inside of cameras unless and I'm breaking the law. Computers. You can take your orders. You stay and on go to hell property. with them. You stay out of a roadway. You understand? You stay out of the roadway. I'm protesting at this point, so I will stand wherever the hell I want. Have a good day, sir. Get lost. That's how you should have reacted in the first place. 
You come out here and you harass me, a law-abiding citizen, that's the reaction you're gonna get. Servants. The auditor taught these cops a lesson, but these next cops took things up a notch. Are you a supervisor? Yeah. I was just, uh, I was just explaining to uh, Megan here that I'm well, an yeah, independent. You have every right to film. Yeah. As long as you don't uh, film the x-ray screens, because that's all sensitive. And, okay. And, and impede the operation, you're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just an independent uh, journalist, gathering content for a story. I think you're well within your rights, and I think you know them. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And your yeah. name was? Brett. Kavanaugh, Brett. Wow, justice. like 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 the Supreme Court oh, justice. He spelled it with a K. That's really Brett funny. Kavanaugh, yep. the Supreme Court justice. The officer was polite and friendly and had no problems with Sean filming inside the airport. However, suddenly State Trooper Lavoy came over and started to ask his ID. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. How are you, sir? Trooper Lavoy with the State Police. How are you doing today? How are you doing, Trooper? Good. I'm here to find out what your business here is at the airport. Today. Uh, nothing. Just uh, gathering content for a story. I'm an I'm an independent journalist. Oh, great. Do you have yeah. an ID on you? Uh, I'm not going to provide you my, G, my, my ID, trooper. For there is this Connecticut, sir, is not a stop and ID state, and unless you have reasonable, articulable suspicion, I've I'm committed. About to a... do that. I'm not here to get a legal advice from you. Yeah. I'm asking legally, an order from a state trooper to provide me your ID. You're causing alarm at the airport. Multiple um, people have come up to us asking what you're doing. There, there's a TSA. There's a TSA supervisor, who sir, just told me I was well I within my ID, rights, please? sir. Let's Put your see hands behind your back, please. I'm going to. I'm going. Put your hands behind your back, please. Sir. The trooper took no time to get aggressive with the auditor, as he didn't seem interested in listening to him. He kept on escalating the situation, leaving Sean with no option. Calls me alone. I don't. Last day answer. I don't have an i I'm not going to put any. I'm not. I don't even have any ID on me. That's going to be it. Okay. I can give you my name and date of birth. Do you have your body camera on, sir? Five eighty one. One detained, refusing to provide ID. I didn't is there I didn't anything on you that's going to harm me, poke, anything I don't, sharp? I don't consent to any searches. I didn't ask you that. Is there anything on you that's no. going to harm me? No, and I don't Knives, consent. needles, weapons? No. No? Where's your ID? I don't have one. No? What's this, sir? That's my car key. Sir, I'm an independent journalist. I'm working on gathering content for a story. Okay. I have not broken any more. No one said that you did. You're not under arrest right now. You're being detained. But why are you detained? You're interfering you... with my investigation. Sir, you need to have reasonable articulable suspicion. Trooper Lavoie had completely lost it as he proceeded to arrest the auditor without any reason. He then proceeded to search him while Sean kept on trying to knock some sense into it. You need to stop trying to teach me. Why illegal... are you shaking? I'm not going to hurt you. You I need to that. stop and listen to me. I'm trying to identify you because you're causing a disturbance at the airport. You refuse to provide me your ID. Illegal You're clearly activity. doing this on purpose. I'm not. So we're going to go through the books. I'm gathering, I'm gathering content for a story. I told everybody I'm an independent journalist. I get I told, that. Now we're so going how to is prove that? that, sir. There is there is no proof of that. The First Amendment grants me the the right. What's your last name? I'm, well, I'm going to ask you a question, and then I'm going to I'm going to ask you again. You. What's your last name? If I do not give you my name, sir, you're going to be you... under, placed under arrest and taken to be fingerprinted to identify you. Okay, my last name is Reyes. How do you spell that? R E Y E S. Yeah. As long as you, as long as you say that, you know, if you say you're going to put me under arrest, I will give you my name. That's what we would R have to do to identify you. Well, it's you, not what I want you, to do. You have no idea. I no came right. over here just to you, identify you. Have... John wasn't posing any threat to anyone, as he was just carrying out his constitutional right. But the trooper didn't seem to have any understanding of the law, as he kept on prolonging the illegal detainment. One word. Can I get your supervisor here, Lavoie? One. Under threat of arrest, I'm providing you that information. Can it's I not get, a threat. Can I, it's me telling you what has to happen. Yeah, really. can, I, can, I get, can I speak to your supervisor a little bit? Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Sir, I, I don't want to, since I'm being detained, I'll I gave you my name by. under threat of arrest. I'm not going to answer any more questions until okay. your supervisor gets here, please. Not I'm a problem. Invoke my fifth. Okay. Detaining me, I'm not going to answer any more questions. I'm going to invoke my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent because I, I want to speak to a supervisor, please, because gotcha. you're, you're making a big mistake here, Trooper. I'm right. telling you, you are. Unfortunately, sir, you made the mistake by not identifying yourself. Sean kept pleading his innocence to the corrupt trooper, but it wasn't changing anything. Both of them kept going back and forth with each other while he was still handcuffed inside the airport. Mr. Yes. Reyes, yes. there was no need for you to be handcuffed. You made it this way. You so, put yourself so you in this situation. Absolutely of not. Not until my backup arrives. But why are you shaking? I'm not, I'm not a threat I'm not to you, shaking. Sir. 
I'm not a threat You're detained you. right now. You're my responsibility. If you fall over, I'm not a threat you're my you. responsibility. You're saying that, but I don't know that. I don't know that you're not a threat to anything here at the airport. Sir, the way the world works, you can't just, you can't handcuff people because you don't know if they're a threat or not, sir. That's <laughs> dangerous that you're acting like this, really. You, just because you're an officer doesn't mean give you, you the right to- You trying to provoke this, but it's not uh, going how, to work. Sir, how am I trying to provoke it? I'm trying to, I'm trying to instruct you and educate you. So That's that not we, your job. Sir? Are you a supervisor, sir? I am not. Oh, I'm, can I get a supervisor here? My rights are being violated. We're working on that. Why are they being violated? Because I'm in cuffs and I haven't broken any laws, sir. I really want negative practice. Hey, sir? Sir, there is, an, as you know, an unlawful detainment. This is the, the you know that, you know what that's going to happen, right? Are you trying to scare me? I'm just saying. It's are you trying unlawful. to intimidate me? I'm trying to tell you that this is unlawful, sir. I've been nothing but cordial with you since you came up to me. Absolutely, except you interfered with my investigation and failed to provide your ID. Trooper Lavoie was just not willing to listen to anything Sean had to say, as he was anxiously waiting for a supervisor to arrive. The crime, Can you articulate I did me not crime? say that there was a crime committed, sir. I tried okay. to identify you to make sure that there was no issue here. And you refuse to do that. I, I, if I were you, then you I would, would not I put would your invoke, hands behind your back. If I would invoke, if I were you, I would invoke your, your own right to remain silent, sir, because you're just digging yourself deeper in a hole. You just you're said there's guy. no crime. <laughs> Come on, man. Not at this point, there isn't. There, there was never. A, yeah, okay. Okay. Fine. Yeah, see, the problem is you think you're you think you're above the law, and you think you're above absolutely. You think not. you're above a citizen. You see, now you're projecting your thoughts because I'm in uniform. So no, you no, assume no. Because I'm, I'm in uniform. I'm assuming because you put me in cuffs. <laughs> yeah, you're detained. That's 100 percent right. An for failure to comply. An unlawful detainment. Okay. Okay. Is the supervisor in, is coming? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm sure he's going to explain it to you. I'm sure he is. All right. The trooper himself accepted that Sean had committed no crime, but despite this, he remained in handcuffs. He clearly needs to get some additional training on the law. Escalation. If you do a little bit of de-escalation, things might go a little bit better for you and anybody else. You could have too. I, I just, all I did was tell you I want to invoke my right. Is absolutely. this a supervisor? No. Come on, man. Can I get a supervisor here? He's going to explain to you guys to release me immediately. I haven't broken any laws. This is insane. You can't. You, if some, you, just, just because you have trust issues, that doesn't mean you can put not, free citizens. Have trust issues. You can't put free citizens our, in handcuffs. It's the nature of our job. This is an unlawful detainment. And when the supervisor gets here, he's gonna let you guys both know that, and he's gonna tell you to release me. We're, we're gonna release you as soon as we're able to do that. I'm not yeah. keeping you detained just because I feel like I want to. You understand that, right? Yeah, no, you, you want to, because you put the cuffs on me. You definitely did. While I was here by myself, and you weren't cooperating with me. Yes, you were handcuffed. I was not aggressive. No one said you all, were aggressive. And all, I, and all I told you was, I'm not providing my deed because I don't have to. Finally, after waiting for a long, the supervisor did arrive, and before getting a briefing from the state trooper, he went over to talk to Sean, who made sure to narrate the entire incident. Sergeant Drummond. Yes. Sergeant Drummond, I would like to be uh, released immediately from this unlawful detainment. I have not broken any laws. Mm -hmm. Your officer, did, your trooper did not have any reasonable articulable suspicion to identify me or in any way. I talked to supervisor from the TSA, Brett Kavanaugh. He mm -hmm. told me that I have every right to film the security checkpoint. Mm -hmm. This is a public building. I'm not I'm an independent journalist. He's vi violating my First Amendment right of freedom of press. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I would like to be released from these handcuffs. Okay. And he turned off my phone. Just, you know, I would like to be released from these handcuffs immediately. Okay. I have not broken any laws, sir. Okay. All right, why were you videotaping? Just out of curiosity. I, I same thing I told you, Trooper. I, I'm, I'm an independent journalist gathering content for a story. Okay. I'm what not going to divulge until the story is published. And now I guess the story has changed to an unlawful detainment okay. by your officer, by your trooper. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, the longer I'm in here, the longer you guys are violating my rights. So I would, as a supervisor, I would advise okay. you to, to do the right thing here, sir, and, and have me undetained because okay. I have not broken any laws. The supervisor had much greater knowledge of the law compared to the trooper, and he made sure to release Sean immediately. You have to, you are obligated legally to provide it. I know that you do not, that you need reasonable, articulable suspicion. All right, turn on. Okay, go ahead, I'm, I'm sorry. That you need reasonable, articulable suspicion, and I think you're, I would like to file a, a formal complaint against this, this trooper. Okay. And I'll be writing a statement to your internal affairs, but I'd like to file a, I'd like to file a complaint with you as a supervisor. Well, I will advise that. Uh, could, wait, you we, do, could you at least? Could you do that for me? Can yes, you advise him that that's not the law? That well, no, that's I'm dangerous. Not, no, no, no. Actually, he, uh, you were. Uh, he had a reason to question you. You chose not to cooperate with him. You I became the subject of an investigation. So I cannot. I, I do not have to provide my ID okay. unless he that's articulates fine. a crime. Okay. Hey, okay. Okay. My, my, uh, oh. Okay. Yeah. Be careful, man. Come on. What's wrong with you? 
Come on, man. This is all I'm calls for. I don't know. I'll be talking. I'll be, ta I'll be talking to professional standards since your sergeant doesn't want him to do anything. You need to learn the law. Don't point. Don't point. Don't Listen, we're done talking. We're done. We're done. Get yourself a scope. Yeah. Let's go, sir. Not even a simple one for Huh? Not even a simple one. No, no, just let him go. Let's let's look look him go. I didn't break the law. All right, let's go. Well, the supervisor did release him from the handcuffs, but didn't say anything to the trooper. Sean really believed that he had been hard done. Therefore, he went over to the Connecticut State Police headquarters to file a complaint against him. The worst was yet to come for Sean as he was confronted by Sergeant Brian Fahey. Thank you, sir. Oh, how, you, how you doing, so, Sergeant? You're videotaping me? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. I, I don't want to talk you. to you then. If you want to videotape me, then if you want to talk to me like a man, we but, can but, chat. But what, what about problem. what about you guys wear body cameras here? What's the difference? I don't have a body camera. I understand that. What, can I get your name, Sergeant? Yeah, Brian Fahey. Brian Fahey. Yeah. So I, I, there's, there's, there's a serious civil rights way? violation okay, going problem? on here. So as I was explaining to you, other trooper, I yep. was record. I was. I'm a journalist, independent journalist, working yeah, on a story. Okay. And I was gathering content for that story at the Bradley Airport. TSA became concerned about me filming. Okay. Um, a supervisor came over. So the first person who was concerned called the supervisor. Supervisor said, "You have every right to film. It's not an issue. I know your rights. You know your rights. Continue what you're doing." One of your troopers, um, out of Bradley Airport, trooper. Um, How can I help you today with pistol permits? Can I help you today with pistol permits? The sergeant didn't seem to care about the problem Sean had with the trooper as he kept being rude. However, things were about to get even more difficult. You can contact our internal affairs department. It's online or there's a phone number. But you're, I'm, you're, but you're, 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 you're a supervisor. I'm a supervisor in charge of special licensing and firearms. So all these people that are in line in 529 gun dealers in the state of Connecticut, that's what we're dealing with. There's an outlet for but you to make your complaint. A, there's sir. a civil rights violation. But there's that, an outlet that you for you to make your complaint and you can make that. We've why, given you why are you guys acting like this? I, I'm trying to make a serious acting civil like rights. What? I don't know what you, because I can't you're... help you with your complaint today. You have your outlet. You can call IA, I can get you the number, or you can go online and make This your... is the headquarters. Can I, can't somebody just come down here and speak to me from no, IA, internal affairs? No, because our internal affairs division is not here. You're all set here? Excuse me? Are you all set here? Well, yeah, there's nothing else obviously you can help me out with at this okay. point. Okay, so you're all set. So you can, you're going to go to IA right now, correct? Yeah, I'll okay. be there. All right. I'm going to be going. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sergeant Fahey had a problem with the auditor videotaping him. And within moments, he did something shocking. I'm going to be going. Okay. So you're going to stand I, here with your cell phone up. I thought, I thought you were busy. I thought you were a busy I am. man. I am so, busy. So you should, you should get to work. I, sh I should get to work? Is that what you're telling me? If you're busy. Can I have a problem between you and I? Yeah. His body camera's on. Yeah, his body right camera's on. Stop. Body camera. He has his body camera on. I don't care. Stop, Stop, man. I don't care. Step back. Step right? Back. I'm gonna this is private property. I'm, gonna, right. okay? I'm not doing anything. You're not right, going to video me and have an attitude with me. I'll get off of it. I'll get off of it. I'm going to tell you what right now, dude. I'm not the one. All right. Okay? I gave you the information you needed. And I gave you your outlet. I'm going. You were given your outlet. I said I was going. No, you wanted to stand there and hold your cell phone in my face is what you wanted to do. Yes, you I wasn't do. in your Take your face. cell phone and go and make your complaint, okay. Okay? okay? okay. The corrupt sergeant snatched his phone away and pushed him out of the building. Sean was terrified to see the sergeant lose his cool as the officers tried to calm him down. All right, Dude, where's your car? Man. Where's your car? At? I'm gonna go, man. I'm going. I'm going. All right, no, but where's your car? I didn't even know where my car's at. You were about to arrest me, man, for real? I, I, I had is to your body camera you. on? Yeah, my body camera's on, buddy. I'm Trooper Castell, 1139. Yep. Wow. Listen, with the situation you that you're going to arrest me for real? We're going to detain you or what the situation was going on, man. You I'm leaving. Being, Conversation. I'm leaving. Conversation's I'm leaving. over. Go ahead. I'm leaving. Stop. I'm leaving. Sean went over to file a complaint against the trooper and the sergeant for his conduct. The trooper was found to be acting within the laws, and the sergeant was only suspended for eight days. However, Sean has filed a civil rights lawsuit against the trooper and the sergeant. It is still under proceeding, and we can only hope that he gets the justice he deserves. Well, these officers certainly acted above the law, but these next cops did something even more shocking. I'm coming, in August 2022, a disabled man was trying to pay for his bicycle at a self-checkout lane in a Target when several police officers approached him. Take 
you can't come back to the city. I was just the disabled man was just having trouble while paying, but he had the money for his purchase. Instead of helping the poor guy out, the officers proceeded to do the unthinkable. The officers led by Officer Kenneth Skeens proceeded to use force against the disabled man. He was soon forced out of the store, and the officers started to question him. Yes, we are. Yes, no, you're not your security. No, you got your pen and pen? Yeah, I do. Okay. So what's your name, man? The poor guy was still thinking that these officers were security guards at the store. At this point, he started dialing 911, hoping that the cops would come and save him. However, he had no idea that he was about to be taken in by the same officers. Refusing to identify yourself, correct? Who are you calling, man? You ain't even, you ain't even He's calling call 911. That's what he said anyway. Say, so just go ahead and put him in handcuffs, because he's refusing to identify himself. Okay, hold on. Uh, I was just paying, I was just having my Why stuff locked in my family pack, no, just and go ahead, the security guards came, and I, well, I didn't take more time than anyone else. The other ones. Just as he got on a call, the officers proceeded to do the unthinkable, much to the person's dismay. So now you're going to be charged okay, with concealing identity, resisting officers, okay? No, no, I. And you're going to be trespassed, so you can never come back here again, okay? Yeah. Stand up. No, that's not right. I was just paying my things. Henry, and I, I didn't know you were, you were, you were, you were, you were a police officer. Yes, we told you that already. I didn't see your badge. Okay, well, we told you, right? You we all have badges. It's yeah. not our fault you didn't look, man. Oh, that, that, that's, we security guards say they're no. police officers all the time. We identified ourselves as Albuquerque so. police. We Let's go ahead and get them to talk uh, to you. stood up and searched. The reason to talk to you was they didn't want you in there no, oh, no more, okay? So we have the reason. We asked you your name. You didn't give us your name. That's what was the reason? It was later established that the store had called the cops on the poor guy. However, still, the cops should have investigated the issue before passing their judgment. Sound good? No, it don't sound well, good. Well, that's what's going to happen. Hey, go, 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 go. See, I, hung the I didn't do nothing. Yeah. Come on. Stand up, stand up, man. Take a step for me and stand up. No, because, because, because I ain't do nothing. 911, help me, please. No one's on the phone, man. I, I think there are police officers right there. No, they, 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 I, they, 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 I didn't see their friends. I didn't know they were police officers. Well, I didn't do I have anything. A knife no, you do. I, I, you better not take We're gonna have to get him standing up, though. I'm not gonna. Can you stand up, man? Are you gonna work with us at all? Because yeah. we gotta stand you up. You're under arrest. Okay, that's not changing now. Well, for what? Concealing identity, resisting officers. Okay. Mm, I didn't know you were police officers. I told I you. That's it? your own fault. You didn't listen. Okay. I can't help you with that. He immediately realized his mistake and even told the cops that he was sorry about his behavior. Unfortunately, the officers had no empathy towards him as they proceeded to drag him to their police cruiser. I can't believe it. Like security guards. Okay, over here. Don't no. resist anymore. 
Stop. Just walk, man. No. Just walk. No. No. We gotta search you, okay? Uh, you got anything on you that's gonna poke no. us? Or hurt us? Yeah, I got a couple of knives. You got a couple of knives on yeah. you? Any yeah. needles? No. You pulled me out! You without even identifying me. That's then you were. Right mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright, sir. Don't make movements, man. Hold on, man. Yeah, get those bags off you, man, okay? Uh, I couldn't take them off. I don't know when I can take them off. The officer's demeanor at this point was sickening as none of them tried to understand the situation. Shortly after, they started to search him. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, you, so yeah, yeah, let me ask you this. You know we're cops now, right? Do you want to identify yourself? Yeah. Uh, Hang on one second. Do you have an ID anywhere? Where's your ID at? Yes. What's your name? Tell me your name. You gonna separate from anything, man? Not till I get a lawyer. Oh, Just let me take it off myself, will you please? You let me take it off myself. Will you let me take it off myself? I'm gonna get it off. I'm so tired. See, I cut it. I, I will take it off myself. Uh, you got me? Separate your feet. My, it's my money. That's fine. Then clutch in your hand, but stop trying to reach into your pocket. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Stop. I didn't know I'm done with you. you. Stop. Didn't me. Separate your feet. You didn't show me your bag. I didn't have to. We identified ourselves. You did that. Well, we are cops, so we are police officers, so. They kept on searching for him for a good five minutes and proceeded to take everything from him, including his money, which he was certainly not willing to give. Well, I'm telling you what we got to say. All right? You know what I'm saying? Matthew McManus. Matthew McManus, that's your name? So Matthew, here's what you're under arrest for, okay? Concealing identity and resisting evading instructing officers, okay? No, no. That's what you're under arrest for. I, I don't have to. I thought I didn't. I okay. don't have to. So I need to. So if you could, if you could release your money. I thought, hey, this is drop my your money. money. We're taking it with us. Drop it, man. Hey. You, we'll, it'll be checked. I thought in. you were security. No, uh, drop the so money, I man. Didn't, didn't Here, I give it to me. Give so it to me. Give it to me. I'll make sure I, it goes with all the money, man. I didn't have to say my. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have to say my It's okay. It's going with you. It's going with you. Everything else in your hands. We're not gonna steal your money. That's not us. You got bags? Evidence bags for any robbery? Yeah, all right. The officers then took him inside the police cruiser as he was about to be taken to the police station for a crime he didn't commit. All I was doing it was paying for my things. Yeah, and, the, and, and you had again. to cut off more of my fanny packs, you know. It was so hard it is to get my money out. And I was trying to get my money out and I got it all out. And then, then you came and I thought you were a security guard. <laughs> Next, we see a cop who thought he was untouchable, but was proven wrong by his own partner. On May 28, 2022, Officer Nathan Dye from the O'Fallon Police Department was on his routine patrol route when he observed a car swerving across the lanes. Soon, he initiated a traffic stop and confronted the driver. Nathan's first reaction was noticing the bloodshot eyes that gave the sign that he was drunk. However, he had no clue that the person driving the car was none other than Hazelwood Police Chief, Greg Hall, who was about to flaunt his status. Okay, and 
M for Henry Frank, Charles 89 for Henry Frank, Charles 89 on a white Honda Ridge line. Okay, Uh, how are you doing tonight, sir? Uh, do you have your driver license and insurance? Mm -hmm. yeah. Where are you coming from tonight? I'm um, actually from the Halls, the Night Castles, the... Oh, okay. Yeah. Even the officer was perplexed once he discovered he had pulled over a veteran police chief. Soon, he proposed a simple test to the chief, but that was him only getting started. You've been weaving quite a bit. Well, I know. Because I was eating my... Ah, uh, okay. Eating while driving. Okay. Um, well... How long has it been since your last drink? A couple hours. A couple hours. Okay. Um, I'm a police officer. Where do you work at? Hazelwood. Hazelwood? Okay. How long have you been out in Hazelwood? Since 1979. Oh, wow. I'm actually the police chief. You're a police chief? Yeah. Hazelwood? Alright. Chief Hall's breath smelled of alcohol, and he couldn't even string a sentence together. It was pretty obvious that he was intoxicated, but Officer Nathan still had to do the mandatory sobriety test. Waterford Crossing. Okay. Um, how about how about this, Chief? Just so I feel comfortable knowing you're not intoxicated and you're okay to go. Can you uh, can you just recite the alphabet starting with letter D and ending on the letter N without singing? So D to N without singing. Uh, starting on the letter D and ending on the letter N without singing. So D to N without singing. However, the chief never agreed to those and straight away asked for a breathalyzer test. And, um, all right. Chief, do you have your, uh, do you have your police ID and stuff with you? Keep looking for that chief, I'll be right back with you. Uh, Greg Hall says he's the chief of Hazelwood. He is. That's what I asked him to look for. Oh, he's got him now. Nathan was surprised to see the breathalyzer results as the chief was three times over the legal limit. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Nathan contacted his sergeant who arrived at the scene immediately.
Yeah, that with them? 209 yeah, I'll talking about them. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, Chief, like I said, it, it's been, what time did you leave B-Hall at? Since the hockey game was over. Since hockey. I hear that they've lost in like the last few seconds or something. Jeez. The sergeant was shocked to hear what had happened, but noticing that everything had been recorded on body cam and dash cam, he could think of nothing but to allow Nathan to continue with the field sobriety tests, starting with the eye test. Anything for me. Okay, now take your time, Chief. Four ninety five sixty two. Could you respond to my stop, please? Just exactly how Nathan had phrased it earlier, the chief was hammered drunk and he couldn't even pass a simple eye test. However, things were about to get worse when he was instructed to do the walk and turn test. How much longer do you have uh, left out at Hazelwood? Me. How much longer do you have left out at Hazelwood? Are you just nine months? Nine months. Yeah. You ready to be retired? So good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I can only imagine how much things have changed since you started in law enforcement and seeing the way it's gone. Gonna have you do a quick PBT, Chief, see where you're at, and then we're gonna kind of figure out from there, okay? Chief Hall never looked confident, and that's when the officer stepped in and calmly guided him through the entire test. However, the chief called it a day this time and had a unique proposition for the officers. Um, as you know, this isn't admissible in court or anything like this. It just gives me a better idea, you know, where you're at, how much you know alcohol is still in your system whether we need to figure out something, get you a ride or something like that. John Nesky, the police chief of the O'Fallon Police Department, was summoned by the cops because they had no other chance. Seeing how the law was bent for a law enforcement officer is saddening. Uh, I'll get back with you, okay? You just live right up the street. Um, do you have your uh, service handgun with you in here? No? You don't carry off duty? No. No? Eh. Yeah. All right, um, Hank, I'll be right back with you. Instead of being arrested and taken to the police cruiser, Chief Hall was made to sit in his car while he waited for John Neske to arrive. Meanwhile, Officer Nathan and his sergeant discussed how helpless they felt at that moment. Chief Hazelwood, he is hammer drunk right now. Oh. Yep. Yeah, he, he's, he's over two. Yeah. He is hammered. He was dodging sniper fire out there. So weaving all over the place. Is it all on? Uh, is it all on the uh, dash cam? Yeah. The driving and all the contacts so far. Yes. So he lives not too far from here, up the street, off K, I think. Um, 
She's the current chief. Yeah. So he's like six, <laughs> six to nine months or something away from retirement. What's he said? What's that? What has he said? What has he said? Yeah, has he said anything? Is he... Finally, a cop's attempt to maintain his authority is shattered when his rude behavior went viral, resulting in him getting fired. I'm here for your protection. Why? Because these people are criminals and will f***ing you over the first chance they get. Yeah, go ahead and smile and kiss them until it happens to you. I'm a 30-year veteran and I got pulled over and yanked out of my car because I refused to ID because it was an illegal stop. Yeah. Look at, just, just Google Connecticut State Police and how much shit they're in. How much shit. Ma'am, what's your badge number and name, please? I'm Trooper Baton, badge number 366. Thank you for your professionalism. Where's I'm the also other? A veteran, so. Good for you. The female officer identified herself and didn't seem too angry. However, another officer was sitting inside the police cruiser, and things were about to take a turn for the worse as Samuel went over to record him. Yeah, thank you for yours. How many combat tours? Two. Yeah, two too many. Where's the other pig that won't identify? He said he out of his car. He'll be He refused to identify. You might want to bring that up with a commander. It's part of your policy. I know you know, but he said it's not. So he's not only a pig, he's a liar. Fucking piece of shit. What, are you, your dog going to protect you? Fucking scumbag. <laughs> Get away. No, Back up. Dude, don't touch me, Back man. Up. Do Turn not around, touch me. Up. Turn around, put your hands on your head. Turn around. Why? Turn around. Why? Why? Get, get me. I, I asked you a question. I asked you a question. Officer Sulik came out swinging at the auditor and knocked him down, along with his camera. Samuel's head struck the pavement, causing him to bleed and suffer injuries in the process. Oh my hand behind your back. Oh my god. Hand behind your back. All right, dude. Hand you behind just... your back. All right, dude. Hand behind your back now. I'm trying to. You just f***ed up my head. God, I got Wait, I got a I got a rule. I'm ruined for the vet. Oh, my shoulders all f***ed up from the war. Please. Hands in front of you. Hands oh in front god. of you. I can't see. I can't see. Other hand. Sure. Dude, I just asked a question. No, you, what did, your you name approached was. my car and I told you to back up. But I can go up to your car. No, you can't. I can. I can. This is going to be a big lawsuit. Okay. Okay. Samuel kept shouting for help, but the officers didn't respond. Moreover, the female officer didn't intervene to de-escalate the situation, allowing Officer Sulik to keep making matters tough for him. You just f***ed up, my friend. Okay. Your qualified immunity yep. is gone. Okay. I'm going to get... I need medical help. I request a yeah, supervisor. I request a supervisor. Right I got your ID. <sighs> Please record this. Your phone is still recording. I request a supervisor. Negative, just negative. I request a supervisor. Do not, I do not consent to searches or seizures. Well, you're under arrest. So well, I, for what? Then read me my rights. I'm not asking you questions. Samuel was arrested without any reason, and he was made to sit there with his head bleeding for 10 minutes before the EMS arrived. The female officer handed him his phone back, but didn't have the courage to release him from the handcuff. Can you hand me my phone, please? Thank you. <laughs> What's the crime I committed? I, I think uh, obstructions are physical, not 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 f***ing verbal. I can do that. I can't. I can go and take pictures inside it. But I don't know what you're doing. But I don't know what you're doing. I, he could have said, "Excuse me, sir, back up," and I would have. I was still four feet away. Oh my God! I could have been. Really? Is that what you're going to use? Oh, uh, no, I have. Oh, is that how we're going to play this? Is that how we're going to do this? Got, officer safety? You, the same thing officer, first officer. Yeah, but you're a police officer, not me. I'm not yelling at you, so why are you yelling at me? Because I'm. I know you're why am I yelling at you? I know you're 
because I'm aggravated. I defended the Constitution for 26 years and get treated like this by some Nazi mother. The veteran was absolutely pissed at the officers, and even though the female officer did initially appear to be calm and composed, she kept defending the action of the tyrant. I didn't hit the ground, I got plowed into the ground by the pig. In my own town, taking pictures of the police is illegal, I guess. All right, sir, so we're, we're separate from them, okay? Yeah, I know. Oh, dude, you're my boys. All right, we're here to treat you. We don't want to have any trouble, okay? Is a supervisor on the way? So we can deliver, so we can, so he's not coming out? For him, no. Can I get a supervisor on site, please? Hey, boss. What's your name? What's your name? Kevin. Okay, I'm Colby. Where's my wallet? I want it back. You had no right to take it. You haven't arrested me. You got me in custody. You haven't read me my Miranda rights or told me what I'm being arrested for. I want that information now or I want my wallet back. God, this dude is just a idiot. After getting treatment, Mr. Garrison was charged with two counts of interfering. However, the veteran never obstructed the cops or posed any threat to them. Soon after this incident, he planned to file a civil rights lawsuit against the officer in the city. He started a GoFundMe campaign, which has successfully raised almost $8,000. Very soon, he will be suing the cop and hopefully get the justice he deserves. We hope this tyrant learns his lesson, but this next auditor took these ignorant officials to the cleaner's on the spot. You have no legitimate purpose to be here. You need to exit this space. You may stand outside. In August 2023, First Amendment Auditor Jean Paul Reyes decided to conduct a First Amendment audit at the New York State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision. However, just as he made his way in, he was met with resistance from a parole officer. This is the parole lobby here. Yes, ma'am. I don't need any help at the moment. I don't need any help at the moment, ma'am. Okay, you cannot be here if you're not here to see anyone um, for parole. There's a sign that says for visitors. I'm here to do a FOIL request okay. for some public documents. Are you recording? I'm taking some pictures and video. Okay, you cannot do that. Why can't cannot I do that? do that? There was a lot of signs up front. None of them said that there was no pictures but or I'm videos a lot. You're, you're, what'd you say? I could do it in person, though, right? No, we don't do a FOIA request here. Why not? You're the agency with the records. The woman was wrong. The building was public, and anyone could enter it, and Sean had every right to film inside. Seeing her aggressive demeanor, Sean decided to teach her a lesson. So I will ask you to leave because we cannot have any filming in here. So the only reason you're asking me to leave is because I'm recording? Ma'am, you are very clear. I can hear you perfectly okay. fine. And I just you're 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 not my parole officer. I don't have a parole officer, I'm and you're not parole. you're not you don't have no authority over me. So I would ask that you de-escalate a little bit and talk to me with some respect, the same way I've been talking to you with respect, ma'am. Do I make myself clear? Is that is that spoke is that is that talking to somebody with respect, ma'am? So you don't you don't like it, do you? After seeing that Sean wouldn't back down so easily, she left the place and called her fellow parole officers, who were even worse when it came to understanding the law. How you doing? Hey, how are you? So this gentleman is requesting for FOIA. I explained to him, FOIAs are not done here. They're done through a request online. He's reporting us. He's not on parole. I've asked him to leave the morning. I'm just taking some pictures and video in the publicly accessible area, sir. May I get your name? I'm trespassing. How am I trespassing? This is a public lobby. Can I just get your names and badge numbers? All three of them appeared nervous and shocked when they confronted Sean as they lacked the knowledge to tackle him. They were too proud to accept that he was legally allowed to carry out filming. However, one of the parole officers proved a little too difficult. I do have business here. What's your business? I'm an independent journalist. I'm working on a story. This is a publicly accessible area. This is a lobby. Um, I'm working on a story on the New York State Department of Correction and Community Supervision. 
Okay. They, they have a, a, a unit that deals with if you want information from DLCCS that they can provide that to Oh, I'm sure they do have a unit that provides information. I just like to go randomly and unexpectedly to public uh, offices and publicly accessible offices and, and conduct my investigation. May I get your names and badge numbers? Preston, 1939. What would you say, sir? Preston, 1939. Preston? And your name? You're the one that said I was trespassing. I'd like to know who says I'm trespassing. I'm not giving money. Why would that? Are you a public servant? I'm not giving money. Do you work for the public, sir? Of course. So why wouldn't you acknowledge yourself to a member of the public? So I'm not well, you you don't know any you don't know who anybody is until you meet them. Exactly. I don't know who you are. And you just met me. At this point, Sean realized he was up against some tyrants, so he asked for a supervisor. So you're not going to provide your name? Are you a supervisor here? No. None of you are supervisors? No. Can I speak to a supervisor? They went to go get it. And you told me your name and badge number, right, sir? Thank you. Appreciate the professionalism. Sir, the supervisor has instructed you to leave, you're trespassing. If you stay on the premises, we're going to call the police department and have the rest of the trespass. You can call the police department. It's fine. This is a publicly accessible area. I'm here conducting bit lawful business. How is this a restricted area if the door is open? I don't understand. Actually, the door is not supposed to be open. The door is not supposed to be open? It should be buzzed in. So maybe it didn't lock from the last person who left. But this is a restricted area. Despite being threatened with an arrest, Sean made it clear that he wouldn't surrender his constitutional rights. Finally, the supervisor arrived, who wasn't any different from the other official. Well, the door was wide open. Hey, sir, how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? Are you a supervisor here? Yes, sir. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Sean. I'm an independent you have journalist. Identification? I don't have any identification okay. on me, and I wouldn't hand it over if I did. What's the purpose of your visit? So I'm an independent journalist. My name is Sean. I'm here to exercise my First Amendment right just to gather some gather some information. I'm working on a story on the New York State Department of Corrections. Excuse me. Sure, sir. Give me one second. Yeah, no problem. You have no ID. I, I wasn't aware that I need to carry ID, sir. You're in a government building, a law enforcement building. Do you have identification? I wasn't aware I was, I was obligated to carry question, identification, sir. sir. Do you have identification? No, and if I did, I no wouldn't give it to you. No, and if I did, I wouldn't give it to you, sir. I haven't broken any laws. Shortly after, the supervisor left as he got a call. Sean remained in the room with the other officers momentarily before the supervisor arrived back. And this time, he had a much more straightforward agenda against him. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Do you have identification with you? You asked me that several times already, sir, not. and I don't, and I, if I did, I would, wouldn't okay. give it to you. You have no legitimate purpose to be here. You need to exit this space. You may stand outside. Otherwise, you will be arrested. For what? Okay, trespass. This is a public You building. have no legitimate business here. Please leave. My, my legitimate business is asking questions of government officials. I'm here okay, to ask questions. We do questions. not speak to the media. I can give you a number that you can call and speak to. Please exit Okay, so the can, you grab, can you grab me the I number? I will give it to you. Please exit the building. All right. I'm just going to take some pictures of these publicly no, accessible... I need you to exit the building Sir, now. this is a small lobby. Excuse I'm just here to grab some content sir, for my story, and then I'll be on my way, me. okay? I need you to leave the building. And I Would will, as soon as I'm done no. conducting my lawful I business, no, sir. You have no lawful business here. I do, Please, sir. Please, no. You have not produced identification as requested by me. I'm the supervisor in this building. I don't have to I provide you identification. To, okay, then you have to leave. The supervisor was getting increasingly impatient with each minute, and his demeanor worsened. Despite this egregious behavior, Sean wasn't to be intimidated, as he kept questioning him back. Maddie's on the phone with your man. There's, there's no need to waste law enforcement's Sir, please time. please exit the building. This is a constitutionally protected it's, activity. You have to leave. This Are you is law enforcement? Trans- yes. You're in law enforcement? Yes. Please exit the building. You have no legitimate So you're saying if I don't exit the building, you're going to arrest me? You will be arrested. Please exit the building. And your name is? My name is Officer Koshin. Koshin? Yeah. Koshin. Officer Koshin. Please. All right, officer. Your name, Koshin, will be on the federal civil rights lawsuit, please okay? exit the building. Thank you. And your name? You have refused 
to and your name? Any documentation. Right I'm asking. Department. I'm asking Please one of. Leave. I'm asking one of your officers their Please name, leave. and they're not providing they their name. They do not have to answer you. Please leave. All right, if well, you have a, we'll figure if out you who he is. Identification. We'll be more than happy to talk to you. I so because that, I because I, I don't have you identification, you're not going Please to leave. you're not going to talk to me. Please leave. It's truly bizarre to see public officials acting like this, and Sean was visibly frustrated by this treatment. He went on to give them one final lecture before departing the building. Sir, this is ridiculous. This is a small lobby. This is a small public lobby. I've already seen everything that I can see. This is ridiculous for you to be acting this way and for your officers to be acting this way, especially her. Do I make myself clear over there? Because that's not the way you treat members of the public. I don't care if they're on parole or not. Do you understand me? Sir, you do not okay. have a legitimate Great. business here. I'll wait for law enforcement to come and we'll talk to them, okay? I'm law enforcement as myself, so I'm at direct then, then you are in direct violation of your oath that you took I to uphold not. the United States please, Constitution, please. sir. You yes, you are. I'll wait for law enforcement to come and I'll speak to them and see what they have you to say about this. Because you're violating my constitutional rights right now, sir. That's what you're doing. And your other officers here are being unprofessional, which is... Makes sense because you're their supervisor, right? After being illegally trespassed from the building, Sean contacted the New Rochelle Police Department to come over and serve justice. Soon, a couple of officers arrived at the scene and the auditor briefed them about the earlier encounter. How are you doing today? Do you mind if I get your name and badge number, sir? Yeah, uh, Cruise 1013. Cruise 1013, thank you. Hi, ma'am. And your name and badge number, please? Duncan 1049. Duncan 1049, thank you, thank you. So I guess you were called here just because I'm filming in publicly accessible areas of this facility and, and around. I'm an independent journalist. My name's Sean. I'm working on a story for the Department of Corrections. And they didn't seem to like that I was in the public lobby. I was in the lobby. It says visitors welcome this way. There was no restricted access of anything. No signage that said it was restricted. But they're claiming that it's a restricted area. You know, it's a public lobby. So they said they were going to call you. I said I would wait out here. And so you guys came to see what you guys have to say about it. Okay. All right? Uh, yeah, sure. No problem. Okay, yeah, no problem. No problem. The cops entered the Department of Corrections, and Sean hoped for an apology. However, they had a pretty unusual claim to make, which left the auditor puzzled. So we're going to be able to get all the body camera footage. Hey, Sarge, how are you? You mind if I get your name and badge number, Sergeant? Sure, 34. 34, Murphy? Yes. Thank you, Sarge. I appreciate it. Thank you. I will be getting the body camera footage. As soon as we're done here, I'm gonna get the body camera footage of what they're saying for full transparency. Stay tuned to the channel so you don't miss the body camera footage video when that comes in. It's always very interesting to hear what they have to say when they think no one's listening. Not many people request body camera footage so they're not really worried about what they're saying inside. I've caught, as you all know, so many law enforcement officers saying the most egregious things when their body camera's on. It's ridiculous. Hey, hey Sarge. Oh. Hi. Hi. Oh, so my name is Sean. I'm an independent journalist. I'm just gathering content in publicly accessible areas for a story I'm working on. Sean, S-E-A-N, it's part of my story. Okay, are you aware that this is a private property? This isn't private property. This is public property. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I was told by Mr. Barry Jacobson, the owner of this property. It's a private property, so I'm just trying to find out right now, did he give you permission to a video record? A Barry Jacobson? Yes. A private individual? He's the owner. According to these cops, the building was owned by a private individual. But despite this, it was currently serving as a public office, and Sean had every right to be there. He once again countered the cops, proving his competency regarding the law. Oh, so he leases the section out to the New York State Department of Corrections uh, Community yeah. Supervision? It's two, there's two company inside this building. Okay. We have um, the Department of Corrections, and what is... Um, like a drug rehab? Yes. Yes, they are uh, hearing from the Mr. Barry Jacobson on the building. We call them, we find we ask him if he give anyone any permission to be on this property currently right now to be with a recording. He said no, he didn't give anyone any permission, but he would like to know who's out here. 
technically, if a government agency is leasing the property, it then becomes under the government agency's control for as far as publicly accessible areas. That's a, it's a government agency, it's funded by taxpayers. But if someone else owns this property and they don't want me here, that's fine. I don't need permission to be here. There's no restricted area signs. There's no keep out private property signs. So there's no way of me knowing that. So I have every right to be here currently. If the owner of the property doesn't want me here, that's a different story. I already got all the content that I needed, so. John was technically correct as the place had been leased to the government and was now a public building. However, despite this, he decided to end his audit as he made his way out of there. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Have a great day, okay? Take care, stay safe out there. These corrupt cops thought they could manipulate the system for their own gain, but their actions ultimately led to their undoing. These moments show the harsh reality that even those who wield power can lose everything when they choose to misuse it. If you found these stories of justice compelling, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content that shines a light on corruption and accountability.